I know it may appear to some that I've forgotten my first wife. There's nothing further from the truth. I think about Lila constantly. Not every day, but constantly. Being married to her for almost 40 years, she made an impact in my life. And for me, to somehow now I just turn that memory off, that would be wrong. As a matter of fact, I would think it would be even blasphemous. And I'll probably get in trouble with God for doing so. Lila was the type of person who really loved people. And Lila loved to see people smile. She would do things to help them. And Lila would tell me, she said, Julius, I married you to help you. And Lila tried her best to help me, but Lila had a Herculean, response, a Herculean task in trying to get me to change. It's not that she didn't try her best, it's that I refused with everything that was in me. I had my own ways of doing things. I was stubborn. I was uh, obstinate. I don't even use the word asinine. And how I approached life and how I approached things that I did. And Lila tried to change that and she couldn't do it. Lila, i never forget when I first met her. One of the things that Lila said to me, she said, Julius, I believe in going to street meetings. And she insisted that I go with her. And some of the best times we had were during those street meetings, when we were in the streets, preaching and witnessing for Jesus. I can't forget that. How can I forget the woman who gave me four wonderful, grand, four wonderful children? Faye, Nikhil, Adrian, and Tanisha. How can I forget the woman who gave me five great, terrific grandchildren, one of which is dead? She gave me Cammy and Trey, Jabril, who's dead, Alima and Jabari. In that sense, Lila, I can't forget her. I can't forget the encouraging words she would give me. She would tell me, Julius, you can do it. All you got to do is have faith. And then speaking of faith, Lila would say to me, she said, Julius, I want you to see what God can do. And Lila would go out here and get into something that I would look at and say, that's impossible for her to pay off. And she said, I'm going to do that because I want you to see what God can do. I want you to have the faith to see God. And she would say, God, show him. Show him how to have that kind of faith. And it would encourage me to do that. She was kind. She was compassionate. She was loving. She was encouraging. She was sympathetic. She was even empathetic. Lila was a special woman. And now as we come to the as we have come to the close of the fourth anniversary of her death, I thought I'll do this to commemorate her by saying, Thank God for Lila. I thank God for what she did for me. I thank God for what she did to me because she made me a good wife. And like I said, she had a Herculean responsibility to try to change me, but she tried her best. As I write, read this and say this, I've known Lil now for over 44 years. And I'm convinced if she was still living, she and I still would be married. This will be our 43rd anniversary marriage. And I don't know if I would have changed or not, but I do know that when Lila was sick, she saw, finally saw in me what she desired to see in a man. She saw a man who stood by her side, who stayed there with her, moved out of his home into the hospital and spent the night in the hospital. Lila finally saw in me what she desired to see. So I don't blame Lila for 
the failure that I experienced. That's my that's my mistake. That's my fault. I did it, not her. She tried her best to encourage me to do the best, to be the best. But I just wouldn't listen. So as I close this out, I want to say this. I'm blessed, beyond blessed, to have known Lila as my wife. I'm blessed beyond blessed that she has spent so much time in my life because she knew me longer than anybody else on the face of this earth. Think about that. She knew my good side, she knew my bad side. And others tried to get her to divorce me. She didn't do it because she loved me. And I want to say this. In my final minute here, Lila and I had four wonderful children. Lila loves her children. I know sometimes it seems that Lila is a little rough and tough, but deep down in her heart, Lila loved Nikhil, Faye, Adrian, and Tanisha. And when her grandchildren came, ooh, I saw a side of Lila that I think I'll see. Lila was confused completely smitten by those grandchildren. She loved Cammie. She loved Trey. She loved Alima. She loved Jabari. And for the nine days she knew Jabrell, she loved him. Lila was a very loving, caring, compassionate woman. And I just wanted to take this time to say that to anyone who think that I have forgotten the woman that I first married, the woman I first loved, the woman that I married and 43 years ago. No, I have not forgotten her. She'll always have a place in my heart. She'll always be close to me. Yes, I've gotten married again. Thank God for my second wife. Thank God for my current wife, Gloria. I give God the praise for her. But glory won't let me forget Lila. She won't let me do it either. Because she tells me, she said, Julius, Lila spent nearly 40 years with you in your life. You'll be wrong to forget about her. That makes glory special. But Lila was, Lila that kind of way person too. I have no doubt in my mind. If Lila was still living today, she'd have to still be married. So, as I close, please understand, I have not and will not forget Leela, my Pocahontas, because she is very, 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 and always will be very, very, very close to me. Honey in heaven, 